98, House Bill 459, House Draft 2. Discussion. Representative McDermott. Mr. Follow Speaker, I stand in opposition. Opposition, please measure. proceed. Mr. Speaker, I support sex education in the context of a health course that teaches the miracle of human reproduction. But you're not going to get that here. Uh, what the proponents of this are going to say is that children need information, skills, education, information, skills, so they can make their life decisions. Well, as I've proven, they get inaccurate information. And I don't know what skills or tools a kindergartner is going to need, a first grader is going to need. Yeah, good touch, bad touch, stay away from weird, weird Uncle Willie. I get that, and that's appropriate. But one of the things I found lacking in all of these things is a predator protection module. And Mr. Speaker, you're going to have to give me a little bit of leeway here because we don't know what's in the curricula. The curriculum, it hasn't been developed. We haven't seen it. We know who writes it, Planned Parenthood. Oh, and they were the medical experts. Planned Parenthood were the medical experts at the hearing. I watched it on the TV. So we don't know what's in the curriculum. <laughs> I sent my office manager out to look for it. He said he found it in a jar next to Jimmy Hoffa's body outside Detroit suburb. But other than that, I haven't seen it. So we're going to hear the talking points, information, education, skills. But these are a leftist perspective. It's a leftist pedagogy. It's a sexism pedagogy. It's a pedagogy that doesn't teach about reproduction. It teaches about you can have sex anytime you want. You're responsible. You're six years old. It's up to you. That's what you're going to get. You're going to see same-sex scenarios for first graders. Kindergartners are going to get reading assignments about two homosexual penguins. And the end of the story is two proud fathers, one lucky chick. How do I know? Because I've seen it. You're going to get, for second graders, the, the story, a classic, one of my favorites, Bailey the boy with 10,000 dresses, where Bailey's parents are looked at as fools because they're trying to change his behavior. Second graders. Now, this transgenderism occurs in less than one tenth of one percent, yet we're going to whitewash 100% of the kids with this information. And, Mr. Speaker, you can't tell me I'm wrong because you don't know, because you haven't seen the curriculum. You don't know what's in it, but I do. Let's go to Planned Parenthood because they're the duty experts. They write this curriculum, they're the health experts. Planned Parenthood says third grade is the time to learn about wet dreams, masturbation, rape, and sex work. I got to plead ignorance. I don't know what sex work is, Mr. Speaker. Nine to 12 year olds should understand that male and female are not defined solely by their chromosomes or genitalia. Everyone has an internal sense of his or her identity, and that sense may not jibe with reality or what they see in the mirror. Mr. Speaker, I want to be a pirate. That doesn't make me a pirate. We want to be a lot of things we're not, but that, that's, that's a departure from reality. So you're going to get same-sex scenarios, and of course they'll be exponentially misrepresented. Instead of 2%, there'll be 25% of the scenarios. You're going to see transgenderism introduced to young children who cannot possibly grasp the concept of what that is, the gender identity disorder the terrible affliction that adults have. There'll be no predator protection. We've seen that. Reproduction, forget about it. You ain't gonna see the miracle of life. Forget about it. You're not gonna be told how a baby's made, and why would you? Planned Parenthood writes it. They put no value on the fetus, the embryo, the zygote, any of that stuff, it's not gonna be talked about. You're gonna be talking about how to have sex, not the biological, a health course that we all grew up with. This is a sex behavior course because Planned Parenthood writes it, Advocates for Youth write it, that's what they put out, that's what they do. Aberrant behaviors such as anal sex are gonna be talked about. They did it last year in sixth grade, why not fifth grade? And you know what, they won't even tell them the health risks. We pull soda machines off Farrington High School campuses and other campuses because it may, in some cases, lead to childhood obesity if the kid drinks too much soda. We tell the youngsters about anal sex. We don't tell them that if you have unprotected anal sex, there's an 1,800% greater risk of HIV. We just omit those facts. The experts at Planned Parenthood omit those facts. 
all these PhDs working on it. They forgot it. Or was it intentional? Of course it was intentional. And then on the low end, they don't even talk about anal leakage. I yield my time. Thank you very much, Representative Masumoto. Thank you. So they omit the health risks. They just omit them. Why? Because it's politically incorrect. Because if you show a fifth grader, hey, and if you do this, you have an 1,800% greater risk. Holy smokes. They won't do it. Well, that casts the anal sex behavior and the aberrant behaviors in a negative light. And by the way, some people are going to say, well, heterosexuals do it too. Since when has this body promoted behaviors that are misogynist in nature and objectify women? Since when did we decide to do that, Mr. Speaker? Misogynist behavior, objectify women, and then among the homosexuals, omit the health risks. This is sloppy. Where's the curriculum? What's in the curriculum? Steep in an ideology of leftist extremism. And it's not age appropriate. What is the criteria for age appropriate? We have it in state statute. There's no mechanics in here or no mechanism that says a committee or who will be on that committee or who actually decides if it's age appropriate. We have the standards, but as I have proven in McDermott Report 1 and McDermott Report 2, the Department of Education doesn't follow the doggone law. And they don't put experts, medically certified, credentialed, educated experts who are experts in the field of behavior, child behavior, child neurologists, child psychologists, psychosomatic medicine. They don't put them on the committee. They put a gym teacher on or a vice principal. <sighs> That's who they put on these committees. This is serious business. We have an epidemic of STDs among young women. How can that be? Across the nation, 32 million girls have STDs. So that's the reason for bringing this in. Highest in minority communities. Guess what, Mr. Speaker? As we've introduced this sex behavior to the young kids over and over across the country, particularly in minority communities where it started, and guess what, they have the worst rates because they get this stuff and they behave in that manner. HPV 16. Now we tell the young girls, wear a condom, you'll be safe. Your partner has a condom, you'll be safe. They can still get HPV, herpes, chlamydia, because they're not physically mature till they're 19. Their cervix is not physically mature till they're 19, Mr. Speaker. And we have a doctor here and he can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But we don't tell them. How can you have a sex ed course and not give them the information? I thought this was all about information, education, skills, and tools. Your partner, your partner has a condom, you're safe, young lady. No, you're not. Your cervix is immature. It's like a vacuum for these diseases. You don't have the defenses there until you're about 19 years old. We don't tell them that. And then they get HPV, they get chlamydia, they get herpes. And they wonder why. HPV 16 has a 40% rate of cervical cancer. This program teaches that at all ages, sexual freedom is a right and a matter of social justice. These experts do not provide teens with all they need to know to make informed decisions nor medically accurate information. I have proved that. Not one person in the body here has said, hey, I looked at your report, page 26 was wrong, you got the wrong date. No one said that. Nobody in the media, nobody in the paper. They dismiss the fundamentals of child development and omit critical findings of neurobiology, gynecology, and in infectious disease. HIV information is distorted. The psychological distress associated with teen sex, especially when followed by general infection is whitewashed. Nowhere in any of these programs do they talk about the emotions of young people engaged in sexual activity. You mean there's no emotions attached? When a 15-year-old boy and girl start having sex, there's no emotions if one breaks up with the other? There's no depression? There's no suicide? There's no anxiety? That is omitted because Planned Parenthood wants it omitted. 
they write this material. If their priority is our children's health, they must focus on fighting herpes and syphilis, not sexism and homophobia. They must grow up and shed their 1960s mentality in any of the 21st century. We have an epidemic here. Representative Poha, would you yield your time to Representative McDermott? Yes, I yield. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in due respect to the uh, gentleman and the representative who's speaking now, can we recess. call a recess? Yes, recess. Will the House come to order? The chair still recognizes Representative McDermott. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, we're going to hear that the kindergartners need this sex education. <laughs> it's laughably bad. We're going to hear that the first graders need this sex education. <laughs> not health, by the way. Human reproduction is not taught. We're going to told they need the tools, the education, information, and tools. For what? First grade? Second grade? Third grade? I, I'm not an expert in psychosomatic medicine or behavioral specialist, but, but at third grade, I want my kids watching Barney. Not learning about masturbation as Planned Parenthood has in here. I, I don't want that. The people of the state don't want that. They made that clear last year in Pono Choices. And to put a measure like this forward is a slap in their face. A slap in their face. Mr. Speaker, people in this building, in this chamber right here, think I'm crazy. They do. But you go out there, everybody else thinks we're crazy. And I'm the same guy. I can hold my head up when I go to church or I go in a community meeting and I can defend my position on this in any neighborhood board throughout the steps, the Oahu. I can do that, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, I feel passionate about this. But you're going to hear, so the responses you're going to hear are information, education, skills, and tools. That's all they got. They got no specifics. They can't answer anything I said. Can't answer the fact that the citizens came down, don't want it. Can't answer the fact that DOE doesn't want it. Can't answer the fact that DOE doesn't even have a curriculum standards for this stuff to be implemented. And there is no curriculum. So on that, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to say no. I'm against it. And I, I look forward to the opportunity to speak on this again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. 